This is the 2025 Nissan Rogue Platinum, and it features a slight safety update for 2025, which is the fact that it now has level two autonomy with Nissan's ProPilot Assist 2.1, making this compact crossover one of the most advanced self-driving vehicles you can buy in North America right now. So let's take a detailed walk around of this 2025 Rogue Platinum, see what it looks like statically, and then get it on the freeway to experience ProPilot Assist 2.1. So the Rogue has never really been a head turner, and I don't think this particular model is either even in its top of the line platinum trim level this does have a sticker price of forty eight thousand dollars which is a pretty penny for a nissan uh it still isn't that luxurious looking like we do have chrome accents on the grill and our split headlight design with our drls up here and the headlights down lower but it really does kind of blend into the crowd of crossovers and SUVs, uh, especially in this dark blue color. I don't really think it stands out, but I don't think it is an offensive vehicle either. Uh, it's boxy, it is practical looking, and I'd say the grille is pretty upright, reminiscent of Nissan's larger SUVs like the Armada and Pathfinder, which I quite like. And we don't really have massive wheels on this vehicle either, but I do like how much sidewall of the tire we get, which will just help make the ride a little better. And I do think this car rides pretty nice, but yeah, not too much to talk about in terms of styling. It is a compact crossover and it's not trying to be anything else. I actually think the new Toyota RAV4, which was just unveiled a couple of days ago, kind of is reminiscent of this Rogue uh, yeah, they, I see a lot of similarities between them. Coming around back, it's a little dirty, apologies, but we have, you know, Nissan, Rogue spelled out, and then this is the Platinum all-wheel drive model. No exposed exhaust tip. We are working with a 1.5 liter turbo three-cylinder on the Nissan Rogue. All Rogues are three cylinders. Not necessarily the most exciting powertrain, but it's not terrible either. It makes over 200 horsepower. I will put the power figures on the screen right now. It's fine. Um, you know, turbocharged three cylinders, they have a tendency to be a little more difficult to pull away from a stop smoothly. And I've noticed that with this Rogue, but overall it's uh, an adequate amount of power and people aren't buying these types of vehicles for how exciting they are to drive. They're buying them for reliability and for a car that will get them from A to B, which this Rogue does. And I've been averaging about 28 MPG. Again, not great. Uh, there are a lot of hybrids in this field, but this Rogue Platinum is not one of them. Hopping into the second row of 2025 Nissan Rogue, I think the interior is a bit more impressive than the exterior in terms of luxury. We have these caramel perforated leather seats with diamond stitching, which is quite luxurious looking. And in the back, you can see we have our own climate control zone, heated outboard seats, dual USB-C charging outlets, and even peasant blockers, which is a nice touch on this Nissan Rogue. We can also see we can appreciate the panoramic sunroof sitting back here and behind my ideal driving position. I have enough knee room, although I would say the cushions are a little low on the for your thigh support. So my legs are a little higher than I'd want them to be. And sitting upright, I do fit even with the cutout for the panoramic sunroof. It's fairly comfortable back here, nothing to write home about, uh, but nice features again for this segment, although you would hope for that at this price point, uh, $48,000 again, quite expensive, but let's hop up front where it's even a little nicer. Hopping up front in the Nissan Rogue. <clears throat> This is where I'm kind of impressed by this vehicle. Uh, turning the vehicle on, it is quite warm out. Let me remove my charging cable and scoop my seat back just to give you guys a wider perspective. There's basically everything you would need in a car in this Rogue Platinum. We have our two zone automatic climate control up front, uh, heated seats, no cooled seats. I think that is an option, but it is not equipped on this particular one. That's really the only thing we're missing. We have a heated steering wheel, and I love that the climate controls are separate from the main touchscreen, even if they are gloss black. Would much prefer this system. Dual USB-C charging outlets, a wireless charging pad, a large infotainment system that does wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. A pretty elegant dash design, again, with this caramel leather open pore wood trim. It's definitely faux wood trim, but that's the design of it. And again, these pretty beautiful seats, I have to say, Nissan's zero gravity seats as well, which are very comfortable, easy to change your drive modes as well with this 
specific dial and on the steering wheel we have very easy to use matte buttons like that and then a fully digital instrument cluster as well as a small heads up display and it's this button right here in particular this blue one that allows us to enter this car's level two features so let's get this rogue on the road to see what it is like to self-drive with ProPilot assist 2.1 all right merging onto a freeway right now flooring it uh, it's not quick there's 60 um it says it makes over 200 horsepower it doesn't really feel that peppy it's adequate though you're not you're not gonna like feel dangerously underpowered at least and to activate pro pilot assist 2.1 all you have to do is press this button on the right side of the steering wheel that blue button and set your speed you want it to go at it'll turn green first and then once it turns blue you are free to take your hands off of the steering wheel and it will keep itself centered in your lane and a safe distance from the car in front of you as long as you are looking at the road and i have to say i'm actually very impressed by this system i would say this is better than ford's blue cruise which is another uh hands-free system that one from obviously ford uh that system cuts out pretty frequently this one has been really good about staying on it's not quite as robust as general motors super cruise which is gm's hands-free driving technology but i do like that when this system cuts out it's pretty calm about it it just says please put your hands back on the steering wheel and it maintains its lane centering functions just with your guidance of your hands touching the steering wheel. GM, when Super Cruise cuts out, which it does less than Pro Pilot Assist, but when it does cut out, it's a rather dramatic affair. It's like, please take control of the steering wheel and uh, it will flash at you. And sometimes it does, see right now, hands on wheel. That was Pro Pilot Assist cutting out because there's cross traffic coming out, the freeway is ending. But when, when Super Cruise cuts out, it's a bit more dramatic, and I don't know if lane centering is maintained on a GM vehicle once Super Cruise disengages, which can lead to some pretty dramatic, oh, I gotta grab the steering wheel because I'm veering out of my lane because the car is no longer keeping me centered. So that part of Super Cruise I've never loved. Super Cruise does the best at not disengaging, at just staying on for miles and miles and miles. Uh, but I do like how Pro Pilot Assist, when it does disengage, which it does every so often, uh, most of the time though that it actually has disengages because it's just been on a system of road that isn't yet mapped uh, for Pro Pilot Assist. Uh, GM has more miles mapped than Pro Pilot Assist does. Um, so I can reset my cruise control now and my steering wheel is green, which means I just have to have my hands resting on the wheel. But I do like how, how calm the Nissan is when it kicks off, like, oh, hey, just put your hands back on the wheel. I'm still gonna drive for you, don't worry, but you need to have your hands touching the steering wheel now. That seems like a pretty uh, solid upgrade and experience over what GM and Ford do. So overall, very impressed by ProPilot Assist 2.1. It's not quite as refined at keeping you centered in the lane as Super Cruise, it bounces just a tad but it is still a really good system i did a you know three hour round trip road trip in, with this rogue and for most of the time it was driving itself and i found that very very nice definitely a luxurious feature for this you know compact crossover which isn't typically a really luxurious segment this makes road tripping super, super easy. And I'm impressed in overall, it's pretty comfortable in here. It's not the most quiet, but it's quiet enough. The seats are comfortable. You've got pretty good Bose audio system, plenty of tech, no ventilated seats, but it does have all of the other niceties you would expect at this price point. Yeah, I'm impressed by ProPilot Assist 2.1 and the overall highway driving experience of this Nissan Rogue. So that's the 2025 Nissan Rogue Platinum. I'm very impressed by how this vehicle drives with its ProPilot Assist 2.1, definitely superior to Ford's Blue Cruise, and some of its elements I do like better than GM's Super Cruise. Uh, Super Cruise doesn't cut out as much, but when it does cut out in this Nissan, I think it's a far smoother experience, just dropping the hands-free aspect and let, telling you to take control of the vehicle in a rather unalarming manner. I like that a lot. And other aspects of this car, it's fine. It has all the features you would want. Not a very powerful engine, but 
that's okay. It's just a compact crossover. And overall, it's a pretty good package, if not at necessarily a great price point, $48,000. Still seems like a lot of money for a Nissan Rogue, although that's pretty close to the average new vehicle transaction price in the United States for 2024. So thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.